Welcome back. This week is Child Bereavement Awareness Week and campaigners are calling on more support for children who've lost loved ones during the coronavirus pandemic. It's thought around 10,000 children have lost a primary caregiver across the UK due to COVID. Well, a new book released by Dr. Shelley Gilbert. There it is, MBE, I should add. The founder of the charity, The Grief Encounter, hopes to help young people communicate their grief. And I'm delighted to say she joins me in the studio this afternoon. Has the pandemic changed the way that we deal with grief? Because so many people weren't able to go to funerals and perhaps be around relatives and other loved ones to process that. Yeah, um, it has and it hasn't. You know, ask a counsellor that question, you'll get a, a, a different answer. Um, I think what has changed is, first of all, the numbers. Secondly, it's been in our living rooms, talk about death. And thirdly, um, what we're experiencing is double, triple, if not quadru quadruple losses, one piling one on top of the other, which for our bereaved families is making things worse. I mean, you've got in front of you the grief book. What sort of things do you do and, and you tell people to help them get over what is, you know, often the most extraordinary sense of pain? Yeah. Um, I think, first of all, we have to recognise that level of pain. It's pain that you can't see. Um, and I know what that pain's like because I was orphaned as a, as a child. My mum died of breast cancer when I was four. And my dad uh, when I was nine. And I'm now, I work in the psychotherapeutic field, award winning, and I was able to meet, have the privilege of meeting bereaved children and families. And along that journey, I could just see um, the myths repeated time and time again. So spoiler alert, Lots of it's in here. But what has happened, and especially during the pandemic, is that we've managed to use and, and learn a new way of grieving. And that the way of grieving is to think about um, what's going on, not only in the traumatic early days of premature grief, but also the longer term, the harder work of you know learning how to cope, learning to cope with a brave new world, a hard new world, a world that's just simply been blown apart. And what sort of things do you advise families, especially when there are young children involved and they've lost someone so, so dear to them? I mean, it's a difficult time for everybody, but for children, I'm, I'm sure uh, oftentimes it's absolutely overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And um, part of the campaign for, for this Children's Grief Awareness Week is about saying the words. So what happens is, even though that language and the spoken word is, is what differentiates us from um, animals as human beings, what happens when you're bereaved is you find yourself lost for words, for example. You can't find the words, or perhaps you don't even know the words, what, uh, how to use. Sorry, <laughs> I illustrated that. You're demonstrating it well. <laughs> demonstrating it, yeah, yeah, spoil you. Um, it, it, so you, you not only um, don't know what words to use, but you lose words. And also, um, another thing that's particularly relevant is old words take on new meanings. Like, for example, the word mum. For me, that became like a dagger through my heart right, yeah. rather than um, one of hopefully love, unconditional love, comfort, guidance. Um, it might be that something like lost, past, peacefully, those kind of words take on new meanings. Or, as, as you were saying earlier, about words might become overwhelming, like small words, dead, kill, die, lost, um, are small words, but these words become like explosions in your head. And how do you make sure that you get access to the children, the families out there who really need you? Yeah, oh, it's hard work. Um, my TED talk was titled How to Lose Friends. Uh, it's, you know, don't call me Dr. Death for nothing. Um, so how do we encourage them? Well, one key step is this kind of, uh, this kind of book that gets the conversations out. And it not only gets the conversations out, um, it gives you loads of tools in an interactive, encouraging way 
of how to be, how to work with bereaved kids, how to not only open those conversations, but keep those conversations going. And this can be done in lots, lots, lots of different ways, you know, any app we can think of. But for example, one, if you can't speak the words, how about singing the words? Every child's different, and we've got a choir at Grief Encounter, and with the help of Catherine Jenkins, we've got those kids singing out and, and talking out. Um, we've got kids making music. We've got kids even more, much more simply painting and drawing and using those kind of very basic, easy skills and, and tools to actually stop, reflect, draw out, use that as a way of, uh, of accessing their really deep and dark feelings, their re really, really deep and dark sadness. So this is all about processing, really, rather than repressing, by saying, you know, you've gone through something terrible, you are going to feel pain, that's normal, and actually perhaps embrace it, and, in, and through embracing it that way, you can begin that process of moving forward again. Exactly, yeah, and we're often asked for statistics, you know, what will go wrong, what will happen, and, and yeah, things can go wrong, but things can also go right, and we... I, I'm so reluctant to give you statistics on, on what can go wrong because this is universal. It's, it's universal. Grief, bad things happen to us. What's important is how we manage that trauma, how we manage the process. I mean, in a world where we find waiting lists for mental health are enormous, there must be a lot of people out there who really need support from, from organisations such as yours. I mean, how do you find yourself being overwhelmed sometimes by, by how in demand you are? Yeah, at this moment in time, it's really, really challenging because Team at Grief Encounter have been incredible. We've kept online, we converted online from day one almost. Um, and we've been able to maintain, we see 160 children every week one to, for one-to-one -one counselling. Um, and uh, we were able to maintain that uh, universally, which to me is a, an absolutely incredible achievement. And we contact and keep contact in other ways. It might be through the groups. If nothing else, we have tangible things that we can send out to, to help us connect you know not everyone's got the internet or as we we know that's problems with the internet and also it's really really important part of our work to help keep these kids safe i mean we've been very big on you know, sharing information with kids and etc cetera, etc cetera. but what we're coming across now is fake information and fake news and also it's disinformation isn't it and the use of social media and you know it's just oh <laughs> turning to the wrong places I'm sure for their this program support. has to end sometime you, you yeah. but just but, briefly listen if someone's watching this program and thinks that I've suffered a bereavement and a close member of my family or friend has how do they find you yeah they can uh, the grief books on Amazon but it's also available from our website and I'd strongly encourage people to contact and what's the website helpline uh, griefencounter.org.uk. Griefencounter.org.uk. Yeah, that's him. Grief books. And they'll find your number on there and everything and access to buy the book either from there or on Amazon. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, you make such you. a difference to people's lives. You deserve that MBE. You're an angel. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.